Yoshimoto became terribly interested in the molecular structure of water and what affects it. Now, water is the most receptive of the four elements. Mr. Emoto thought perhaps it would respond to non-physical events. So he set up a series of studies, applied mental stimuli, and photographed it with a microscope. For one sample of water, we drop about 0.5 cc's onto each 50 Petri dishes. Then we take those 50 Petri dishes and freeze them in a freezer at minus 25 degrees Celsius for about three hours. We take those frozen samples into a refrigerator that is set at minus 5 degrees Celsius where a microscope with a camera is set up. There we take photographs of each of the 50 water drops individually. We first take photographs of water that we did not put any information in. Then we take the water with information and do the same procedure just described. We take those before and after photographs and compare the differences. When we projected the feeling of love and thanks to water, it made the most beautiful crystal. At times like this, I think water is at peace. This first picture is a picture of water from the Fujiwara Dam. And this picture is the same water after receiving a blessing from a Zen Buddhist monk. Now, in this next series of pictures, Mr. Emoto printed out words, taped them to bottles of distilled water, and left them out overnight. This first photograph is a picture of the pure distilled water, just the essence of itself. These subsequent photographs, as you can see, are each different. This is the chi of love. And we move along here to thank you. And you can see where he taped that uh, to this bottle here. But if you read Japanese, you already knew that. <laughs> now, Mr. Emoto speaks of the thought or intent being the driving force in all of this. The science of how that actually affects the molecules is unknown, except to the water molecules, of course. And it's really fascinating when you keep in mind that 90% of our bodies are water. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. Recently, there was the huge tsunami that happened and you wrote that you wrote that uh, the prayer for that um, that was that was great um, thank you I've noticed that when something like that happens it seems like people from the, around the world suddenly there's this outpouring of um, support and help there's something about helping on the world level that seems to uplift everyone what what do you make of that through my 10 years of research, I have been visually sending the message to people all over the world that people's prayers and thoughts can affect reality no matter where they are. So because this idea had already been accepted by many in the world, people probably thought, oh, so that's how it works. If we try, our energy can reach there. Then we should all pray. And this is the reason why there are no great outbreaks of infectious disease as a result of the tsunami disaster. With a repetition of similar actions, people may start regaining faith in prayers. 
Therefore, in other words, there may be more disasters, be it natural or man-made, that would create more casualties along the way. Through these experiences, more people may be able to perceive these problems as their own, that they are all responsible as well. We really learn to love that, that these particular problems of separateness would just disappear, like a, like a filmsy uh, mist when the morning sun.